Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Amin Dillon, and I'm so thrilled to be back. I know it's been a little while since you've seen some brand new episodes from me, um, and it's simply because we've been on hiatus. You know, during this pandemic, a lot of artists and a lot of these production houses have put their projects on hold. Um, and you know what? I feel like it's been a well-deserved break for a lot of artists. So uh, things are picking up again. Things are being released again. I mean, depending on where you're watching this from, most likely uh, your city has has uh, pretty much reopened so it's a very exciting time and we are so thrilled to be back in action now for this episode I'm super excited because not only am I back creating new content for you because you know I missed you all but also it's my first time actually speaking to this actress so today on the show I am sitting down for an exclusive with the one and only the gorgeous the talented Malika Shawarit she's on the show and what's interesting is it's my first time chatting with her. I've actually, my whole decade of being in media, I've never had a chance to meet her. I've never had a chance to interview her. So for me personally, it's just so exciting to be able to finally get that chance to meet her. I respect her so much. I think she's a great actress and she's always coming up with these amazing characters. And, you know, on the show today, you're actually going to hear from her and how much it means for her to be back with a brand new movie. She's put in so much work into this movie and she's playing this character named Galabo and she's just this is her dream role she's so thrilled to be playing her and you know you can just tell she just really missed being in action and she just really wanted to make sure she was able to connect with you her lovely fans so we're getting a chance to chat with her about this movie and we're also just going to catch up with her and see what life has been like for her so I know you all you big Bollywood fans and all of you Malika friends are going to really enjoy this interview so before before we get to it, let me just remind you all that we would so love it if you could subscribe to this channel. It means so much to us. It means that also you don't miss anything. So every time there's any new exclusive content, you will see it. So be sure to subscribe to this channel for all of that. And without further ado, here is my exclusive with the one and only Malika Shwadith. Check it out. Malika, it is so good to have you on the show. It is such a pleasure. I've been dying to interview you. So it's so good that finally it's happening. First of all, I got to ask you, how are you doing? Thank you, Amin. I'm really doing good. Thank you for asking. Just like we were talking, you know, everywhere you look, it's doom and gloom and sad and heartbreaking news. So the re and, and the release of RKRK, which is releasing on this Friday, May 14th in America, North America and Canada, it's something that I really look forward to. It's such a divine blessing to focus all the energies on this creative aspect of our lives instead of focusing on the doom and the gloom. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people were hesitant to release any projects during the pandemic, which I completely understand, but I feel like people need it. I feel like more than ever, they need good entertainment. And I am so happy to see that not only you and your team decided to release the movie, but also I know you have been very vocal online. You've been interacting with your fans um, and making sure they kind of have a distraction and have a way of feeling like they're not being cut off from the world. So thank you. I think this is going to be a, a nice positive change that people are really going to look forward to and appreciate. Well, you're welcome. You know, in India, unfortunately, we cannot release it right now because all the theaters are closed. But fortunately, in America, the theaters are open, opening in the process and we can release it. We can a virtual cinema. Uh, whereas you go, go click a link on the website and then you can buy a virtual ticket and watch at home or you go to the theater. So I'll be going to the theater in Los Angeles at the Lemley Theater to watch it live in the theater. You are? It's open? Yeah, it's open. Oh, okay. Uh, it's different here in Toronto. Everything is still closed. Oh, that's such a bummer. Uh, well, you know, Toronto loves you. In fact, your Canadian fans love you. So what role do your Canadian fans play in your life? Do you feel that love and appreciation from them? They play a huge, because I think Canadians are such diehard Bollywood fans and they're so loyal. I mean, their love and support means the world to me. I am who I am because of my fans. So I'm really hoping that my Canadian fans are going to support me, stand by me and just watch my film on the 14th of May. And I mean, it's such a lighthearted, fun film to watch. It takes you to another world. And that is what we need right now. 
the escape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get into the movie. So one thing I've noticed about you, Malika, is you're not one of those actresses that just pushes movie after movie after movie out, right? Like you're very choosy with your roles. I've always noticed that about you. And if you look at the characters that you've chosen, they're always very different from each other, right? And you can tell that you're always trying to pick different characters that really challenge you as an actress, or you can tell that the role just really spoke to you. You can just tell you're just really excited and you're really feeling connected to that character. So about this movie, tell me the story. How did you come across it? How did you come across the script? And what was it about this movie and this role that really spoke to you? You know, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the director, Rajat Kapoor. And when he offered me the film, the script, when he sent me the script, I was just over the moon. It's so fantastic because first of all, Rajat has made one of the finest films that has, that has come out of India called Aankho Dekhi, which is, it's my favorite film. So, and I'm a huge fan. And when I got this opportunity, this role, I read the script and I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, the, I'm Gulabo because where I mean, mainstream Bollywood is so formulaic. I mean, you don't get to play parts like this. You don't get scripts like this. It's so predictable. It's all about looking good, looking glamorous, having nice, good songs and nothing against that. But I think I've been there and done that. And now it's time for uh, reinvention, which is very important for an actor to reinvent. So tell me, when you are playing these different characters, I know as an actress, you really are trying to get into the mind of that character, right? So that when people are watching that character on the screen, they're not thinking, oh, I'm watching Malika. They're thinking, oh, I'm actually watching this character in this example, Galabo. So tell me a little bit about preparing for this role. What do you do in order to really feel like you are in, you're stepping to the shoes of Galabo and really making sure that you are bringing her character alive on screen? So, you know, it's based on, it's an, it's an ode to the cinema, Bollywood cinema of the 50s and the 60s, which I also think was the golden period of Hindi film. It really was. So we've based Gulabo on one of those uh, yesteryear actresses like we had uh, Vahida Ramanji, we had uh, Meena Kumari ji, Madhubala. So I had to watch and observe a lot of their films and how their expressions were like, how, how was the dialogue delivery? How did they walk? How did they wear their saris? How was the hair? Because the hair was so different. And I noticed they all would wear a rose or some sort of a flower in the hair, all of them. The blouses were cut in a certain way. So a lot of discipline went into it, also in terms of how they portrayed emotion on camera, which was like, the face was like very plain. It was not over-exaggerated. It was not like a, a lot of energy. It was very contained. So in that respect, a lot of discipline went into playing Golabo. Are you one of those actresses that when you go home, you're able to just disconnect from the character and become yourself again? Or do you find you become one of those actresses where when you take on a role, you fully become that character, you fully step into their life, right? Because I've interviewed actresses before that have told me it's sometimes really difficult for them to turn that switch off, right? So they spend all day on set being that character. And then when they go home, it's really hard for them to just step back into their lives. They feel like they kind of are living that character's life 24 seven. So for you and with Galabo, what kind of actors were you? Did you feel like you were able to have your own sort of identity during that filming time? Or were you fully immersed into Galabo's life? That is a very serious dose in a case of method acting. You know, when I leave the set, I, I don't like to be, you know, I just want my mind to be free because being on a set and in that costume and in the character is, is really energy consuming. It just completely takes over. So when I go home, I just need to de-stress and get out of that. It's difficult to live in that character day in and day out and you should and one should, but it's really, really hard for me. I like to soak in the bathtub, sit in the jacuzzi, like really let the energy of the day kind of sink in. So to answer your question, I, I, try, to, I try to separate me from the character when I go home. 
I was just picturing you, you know, you'd be having your off day and you'd be meeting up with friends and you're still like, you know, dressing like Galabo and, you know, uh, walking around and talking like her and your friends would be like, mm, is there like, is this something that you're just trying out or are you working on a new film, right? So uh, <laughs> I think it's always interesting for people in your actual private life to see if they can tell <laughs> if you're working on a movie or if you're not. Well, that'd be great fun, but it's not practical in real life. Like my mom, my mom would think my, my mom would think she's gone mad <laughs> <laughs> moms always think that they all do. actually tell me uh, what about the filming so were you able to wrap everything up before the pandemic or did you have any sort of challenges uh filming with uh the threat of the pandemic we followed we were not so affected by the pandemic we followed strict protocols and everything and we were able to wrap it up just before the serious wave of the pandemic hit so we really escaped by a narrow margin. Mm -hmm. And then what about the release of the movie, right? So, you know, I'm sure this must have been a big discussion with everybody involved. You know, when do you release a movie? When is the right timing? So was there an actual opportunity that the film was done and you could have released it earlier? And maybe there was some hesitation to or, you know, why did the team feel like now was the right time to release this movie? We couldn't have released it earlier because the cinemas were closed. In India, in India, the theaters have been closed since last one year or maybe more. It's been over there now. The theaters have been closed. So, so I mean, there were conversations about it to release it uh, online, streaming. But then, of course, the director wants to release it theatrically first, like how it's releasing theatrically here in the U.S. And then on the streaming platform. Mm -hmm. Like even here, I don't know when we're going to have a chance to watch the movie in theaters, right? So, I mean, hopefully that opportunity comes soon, but at least we're fortunate enough that we will be able to watch your movie. We can stream it online. So at least there are some opportunities uh, for your fans here to still watch your latest movie. So we're thankful for that. Tell me about that moment where you first got to see the movie, right? This is my favorite part because I feel like when everybody comes together to work on a movie you have the vision you kind of have an idea of what the film is supposed to look like right but then when you finally see all the pieces put together and you get to see you know maybe some of the scenes that you're not a part of and you get to see the final project it's always like I think such a beautiful moment for the entire crew to see all the hard work pay off so tell me about your first moment when you got to see the completed film what were your thoughts what did you think of how the movie had turned out yeah because let me tell you what what I saw translated on the screen is much better than what I read on paper because the film is also the film is also very philosophical it has a very huge philosophical part of the film is is like that so that the philosophy translated better on screen because it was very visual coupled with music and and dialogues I could really understand that and enjoy it. I mean, you know, I mean, where do you see in, in Hindi film cinema even characters named Gulabo and Mehboob today? Where? You know, the Bollywood films are so formulaic, you don't even see that. And, and I feel that the, these kind of films are uh, independent films. They are the heartbeat of Indian cinema. Th th this is what really keeps the Indian cinema going, but it is so hard to get funding to get these kind of films made. It's really, really tough. Mm -hmm. Or even just getting a film release because I've interviewed numerous independent artists and filmmakers, directors, and that is one of the biggest issues they've told me is, you know, when they have a project, it's hard to get, you know, financial backing or to even get the same sort of resources that a sort of commercial project may get, right? So in terms of being released in the same amount of movie theaters, um, the timing, um, what slot they get, you know, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, you know, sometimes I feel like there's this misconception that there isn't an appetite for original scripts or for sort of these non-commercial movies, but there is. Like it, we have been seeing that so much. There's so much um, popularity now with these independent films, uh, independent shows, independent artists where the audience really craves something original, something they've never seen before. And, you know, I just think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, you know, if you have the big name attached to it or if you 
idea of the big, you know, production house behind it. People appreciate really great stories. People go to the theaters. That people go to the streaming services because they want to feel a connection to a story. They want to have something, a feeling invoked inside of them that makes them go, "This movie is really relatable," or "This movie just, you know, maybe opened me up to a world that maybe I." don't have any connection to right like people I think don't want to always feel like they're seeing the same old same old people really appreciate original productions like this absolutely absolutely and, and coming back to RKRK you know the, the uh, characters like Gulabo don't exist in real life she's so ethereal and always love and longing expressions of love and longing on her face and they exist only in the fantasy they exist only in our minds so that so in that way it was great fun playing gulabo and of course to wear all those great 60s costumes and have your hair and makeup done like that it it did give me it did give me a feel of how the actresses must have felt and gone through at that time okay so we want to make sure everyone goes out and watches the movie of course uh so maybe we can kind of give a little teaser to the film, right? So when your fans go watch the movie, uh, tell me about a moment that was really special for you. So when you watch the movie for the first time, you know, tell me about the scene. It doesn't even have to have you in it where you're watching it and you were like, wow, that is such a powerful moment in the movie or wow, this is a moment that really just connects or touches my heart. So, you know, that way when your fans go watch the movie, they can look out for that scene. So was there a particular scene in the movie that just really blew your mind i mean there are so many moments like that in the film but since the film is very light hearted and fun i really loved uh, ranveer shore's character because he plays a villain in the film and but he plays a very classy villain do you understand and he like he will talk to gulabo with a lot of aap kaisi hain and the dial very respectfully unlike the villains of today but one of my favorite scenes is the the, the romantic scene between gulab gulabo and mehboob where she's telling him apna khayal rakhna and he's saying mera naseeb meri mutthi mein do it, it just makes you you know that kind of romance how actors used to romance with each other back in the day in the 60s I relive that in this movie. That was that they were very special to me. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a really good point because I feel like a lot of movies these days they focus on showing romances in a very modern type of way, right? But I think there's still that appreciation for that old-fashioned style of love where it wasn't so much about you know the physical touch or sometimes. two people couldn't even be together physically in a room but it was about using their words as poetry or you know you would have characters writing letters love letters to each other right and to me that's like such a beautiful way to show romance and that's why we call it the classic old fashioned type of romance that you don't really see that often on shows on uh, TV in the movie so that is something that's really special about this movie as well right it's that kind of a romance with their eyes and very very subtle so that that is really for me uh, the most special part of the movie it's like a choreography a beautiful choreography between mehboob and gulabo i want to give you the chance to pitch your fans make sure they know why they need to drop everything and absolutely go watch your movie as soon as it's available in their country tell them why they need to do so because it's such a good film it's a fun lighthearted film there is no unnecessary violence there is um, no exploitation you can watch the film with the family it looks very beautiful because the lighting is all 60s lighting and it is funny as hell it is so funny you just laugh non stop and it's also about this about what the, the the filmmaker cannot control the actress you know so i'm also playing this entitled high maintenance temperamental actress who's never on time who cannot remember her lines word to word every line has to be fed to her by the assistant those scenes are absolutely priceless and that's and real <laughs> And so also, I mean, it is so nice to see you on screen again. We miss you. I know. Thank you. It's good to be missed. It's good to be back on screen again. But also, I mean, like I said, you need to. Uh, it was a very conscious effort of my part to be back on screen with a good role. 
you know, there are a lot of offers of just doing those soft singing and dancing roles and nothing against them and looking pretty. But like I said, I don't want to do that anymore. I want roles now, okay, they can be glamorous, but they should have some substance, some acting substance, scope for reinvention, layers to the character. And you know what's interesting? This is the first time we're actually meeting, and this is the first time I get a chance to interview you. But I've always, as a fan of your work, I've always noticed that about you, that you always pick different characters, that you're just somebody who marches to her own beat. You aren't somebody that, you know, gets kind of put into a box of okay these are the directors you're going to work with these are the movies you're going to do these are the characters you're going to play right I've always gotten a sense that you are an artist first and whatever kind of speaks to you you're going to do you're not going to try to follow what everyone wants you to do you're going to listen to your own gut and so you know every time I've seen a movie that has your name attached to it I actually don't know what I'm going to get right I, I have no idea what kind of character character it's going to be you know I don't know if it's going to be you know the very glam you know uh, sophisticated you know uh, dancer model or it could be somebody who is going through a very difficult time and struggling right and you know even like the way your character will come across on screen I have no idea like how it's going to be shot right because all your films are so different from each other and you know I actually really appreciate that that as a movie goer when I go to when I go to see something that has your name attached to it I love the fact that I am in suspense I have no idea what you're going to do to bring that character alive so I really appreciate that that you march to your own beat and you don't let anyone tell you what to do or how you should be doing your acting so I appreciate that well thank you try I try another thing I wanted to point out to everybody was I remember when you first moved to LA, when you first went into Hollywood, it was at a time where no one had really done it or at least had been successful in it. Um, It was also even a time when it wasn't just even Bollywood actresses trying to do a crossover and get work in Hollywood. It was also a time where you just didn't see a lot of South Asian faces on the screen, right? And obviously, we're so fortunate. Things have changed now. You're seeing so much South Asian talent that's, you know, everything from movies to TV shows uh, on screen to behind the scenes so there's a lot of South Asian talent now but again it's a testament to you marching to your own beat you went out there you went to go try Hollywood before it was really safe to before it was really uh, seemed like a possible crossover and to me that makes you a pioneer and I think a lot of people should still give you credit that at that time you took a big risk by leaving something that you were very comfortable with where you had you were famous and popular and had all these offers and you actually went and took a challenge went to a whole other market and really opened the doors I think for a lot of other people to feel like not only if they wanted to try Hollywood that it was a possibility for them to be able to find work there and I think women like you are part of the reason where so many South Asian actors and actresses feel like it is possible to work in Hollywood that's true yeah are you still based in LA no 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 because I'm now between India you know it's at the end of the day I mean India is home and that's where my people are my family is Uh, that's where my fans, you know, love me. They're all there. So it's difficult to, to have one foot in LA and one foot in Bombay. It's really tough. So I'm spending more and more time in India because also what's happening is uh, in, in the pandemic, India discovered streaming. And on a streaming platform, I think writers and directors have a lot of freedom to write uh, substantial characters for women. For example, Delhi Crime, you know, we have a 55-year-old woman who's playing the lead. And the and Delhi Crime won an Emmy Award, so which is really hopeful for actors like me. And so now there is interesting work happening also in India, which uh, uh, on the streaming space. So which is I'm exploring right now. And I think it not only was it wonderful for women in India to feel like that there was a market outside of India for them to find work, for example, in uh, entertainment, but it was also important for women like myself that grew up in Toronto, grew up outside of India, but were connected to their Indian roots to see faces like yours on the screen because, you know, it's important to have representation. It's important to feel like you are being included and that there is a spot for you 
at the table. And so to have women like you before it became really everybody coming over and trying to find work in Hollywood and being successful at it, you were that woman that I think everyone looked to to say, you're going to be the one to break down these barriers. You're going to be the one that we're going to turn on the Emmys or the Oscars and we're going to see a South Asian woman standing there. You know, I think that's something that is really important that you've done with your career just to even help other South Asian women feel like they're represented. Right, absolutely. And today it's really possible. In today's world, it's very, very possible with diversity becoming such a focus. Okay, so I'm almost out of time with you, but I want to bring up this question because this is also a testament to why you are so unique and special. So I remember the first time I saw a photo of you. Now, you've been pictured with so many celebrities, but this photo in particular made me go, wow. It was a photo of you with President Obama. And to me, that I was like, oh my God, this woman is living the life. Like for you to be invited to be that close to the president and to get a photo with him, I'm going to stake this right now. I think there is no one else from Bollywood that's actually been able to meet with the president and get a photo with him. I'm going to state it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've not seen any other Bollywood actor or actress achieve that. So again, that's a testament to you and of your amazing career that you were able to be in that circle, to be in that environment. And so that's what is leading me now to my next question. Of course, you broke down barriers by obviously being invited to the White House and getting your photo. Now we have the first ever South Asian VP. So I wanted to find out what were your thoughts when you first heard the news that Kamala Harris was elected as America's vice president? I, I, you know, I've met her. I've had the good fortune of meeting her. She's half Indian and half African-American. Uh, she's extremely bright, intelligent, and come on, she's made history. So we're all, it's something to be really proud of. Yeah, and I think it's just such an inspirational time right now where, you know, I just feel we're so fortunate that this next generation of women that are growing up, they're going to see faces that look like them this is why I always talk about how representation is so important because not only will they say hey there's a place for me in Hollywood there's a place for me in Bollywood but there's also a place for me in politics I mean in American politics in the White House and so I think it's so special that all these little girls growing up now they know there's nothing stopping them that whatever their dream is that there is going to be someone that looks like them that is there opening doors and that they too can go work in the White House. They too can become, you know, the vice president. And you know what? I'm just going to put this out there. Who knows? Soon, maybe during this generation, we might even see the first South Asian president. So there you go. Even when I met her and she was like, uh, uh, it was for the for my film Politics of Love, you know, and I was trying to portray a character uh, which was based on uh, Kamala Harris. At that time, she was uh, the senator in San, San Francisco. So I I spent a lot of time with her and, and that's what she told me. And she said, just go for it. You know, women should be, women should be told and they should be encouraged to really pursue their dreams, but they're not told that they're not, they're advised against it usually because women, they have to raise their families and they have other responsibilities. So, but she told me to just really, really focus on my dreams. And if this is what you really want to do acting is if this is what you want to do. Just go for it. Don't let anything come in your way. Okay, so should we give you the credit then? I'm picturing you were having this conversation with her and you're like, Kamala, we need you to make history. We need you to become the first South Asian female VP. And she was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. And there you go. Now she is. She made history. So should we give you a little bit of credit for that? I did. And I, and I put a tweet out way back uh, that, you know, I just had the good fortune of meeting with Kamala Harris and she could be the next president of America. And I, I tweeted that a few years ago. And now when she became the vice president, the tweet went viral. Okay, I'm going to look up that tweet because that's a pretty impressive prediction to put out into the universe, put it out yeah. on Twitter, and it actually came true. Right, yeah, the tweet went absolutely viral everywhere. And they were like, oh my God, Malika predicted this many years ago and today see what's happening. Because she had that kind of dynamism. She was very dynamic when I met her. 
And that's what I love about you. I feel like both you and Kamala are these type of women that, you know, march to your own beat. You have your goals and you're not going to let anyone stop you from achieving them. So I see the energy in you as well. Um, Getting back to your prediction. So the fact that you made such a big prediction and it came true, it makes me think that, you know, maybe you're onto something here. Maybe, you know, you're really good with predictions. So uh, Malika, do you want to maybe take this opportunity to uh, let us know about any other predictions that you would like to make that we should keep an eye out for um, and then is most likely going to come true? You know, I mean, I am um, I'm a philosophy major. And what I realized and learned during these turbulent times is one day at a time. I'm really focusing on living in the present moment because all we have is now. So I'm not making any plans for the future at all. And then I realized all philosophers are Indian philosophy. It also teaches us that to focus on living presently and living it the best way that you can be the best version of yourself that you can be in the present moment. Malika, it's been a pleasure interviewing you and getting a chance to actually meet you for the very first time. So thank you so much for coming onto the show. Thank you. I mean, it was really fun talking to you. Thank you. And the questions you asked were really interesting and good and fun. 